Yo, what up? It's your boy Diesel Time, and welcome back to the meaning of Rascache. Rascache, say it with me now. Rascache, the meaning of Rascache. What does that mean? It means you got a little bit of an anti authoritarian attitude. It means you believe in yourself and what you bring to the table. You don't have to worry about what the establishment, the mainstream might think, what the people, the masses might say about your contributions because you know that someone's going to like it. What you bring will find its audience and they will love it. And that's okay. That's great. It's the best. You are the best. Remember that. Anyways, today we are going to talk about one of the best one of the most in-your-face anti-authoritarian figures, and that is the classic character known as Zorro. Oh boy, oh boy. We are going to be talking about Martin Campbell's films, the 1998 Mask of Zorro, and the a bit too late 2005 Legend of Zorro. Zorro. You got to roll the R's. Zorro. Zorro means fox, which is similar to raccoon, which is the actual meaning of rascache. It's a Nahua word, Nahua being the language of the Aztec, the original Mexica, the Mexicans. No Mexicans around here. And Zorro is certainly a Mexican. He can fight for the people. Yes, he can. And that is exactly what he is, a man who fights for the people. Now, traditionally, Zorro is an aristocrat who puts on the black attire, goes out into the night and does the sort of Robin Hood routine, the steal from the rich, give to the poor. And the rich in this world, this uh, colonial age California, it's like gold rush times. Man, are these aristocrats just a catty, you know, just a nasty bunch. It's just, oh man, do they just cake it on thick? These guys are just the worst. And all you want to see is them get their comeuppance. And so this this rich man, he finds himself a poor man, one he can tailor make, bring up, rise, train you know, give some honor and some dignity to this this criminal in chains who comes from nothing, and he teaches them how to blend in with these snotty rich folks. And for those of you who have seen Django Unchained, you might know what I mean. Django is asked to play the man capable of surveying Mandingos in disguise deciding which might be the best Mandingo. And he, he, he describes this type of person as being the most despicable, the worst type of black man you could be is one of these guys. And Antonio Banderas is Zorro. His um, Don Alejandro de la Vega is essentially this. This Don Alejandro is his vision of the rich. It's him playing the part, being a method actor as the piece of shit that he pretends to be in order to fit in with high society. Meanwhile, he's going behind their back in the mask of Zorro, making fools of him, of them. He's not making fools of himself. He's making fools of these rich men with their traditional sword fighting, but no, he's got more tricks. He does not play by the rules. He does dirty boxing. He does swinging from ropes. He's a swashbuckling pirate, and he makes fools of them in combat while also making fools of them metaphorically while standing up for the people against these rich assholes who deserve every ass whooping they get from a hero, a hero that you might not see in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No, he doesn't quite fit in. No, this is a simpler way of storytelling. This is a more innocent tale. And yet, it's not. Because Zorro has a hot lady friend that he 
undresses with his sword. No, 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 he would get canceled today. He would get me also if he were to do that to a woman as fine and sexy as Catherine Zeta-Jones today, but she doesn't mind because she is also a sexual being. She has lustful feelings for Don Alejandro. She wants to feel the flame. And she dances, and she sword fights, and she makes out with her hero. Oh, it's so hot and sexy. Whew. I don't know. You probably can't. I, I'm, I'm like nine degrees hotter right now than when I first started the video just talking about it. I mean, Zorro, he's got a hard on for the, the daughter of the governor, man. He's not effing around. Actually, no, it's not the god. It's... The daughter of the original Zorro. Isn't that a little incestuous and weird? He's like, hey, man, let me train you. And, and if you like my daughter, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but she's actually being raised by the governor, which is just a way to say F you to the original Zorro. All the more meaning for you to want him to get his comeuppance. And man, just the sexual tension on screen, the action, it is... Too awesome, too fiery for it to be simply labeled as campy and cheesy and silly and for kids. I mean, you can go back and watch it as an adult and be like, yo, how come Iron Man isn't this sexy? I mean, you got Tony Spark being like, Tony Spark, you got Tony Stank being like, yeah, I slept with every single cover model of Playboy, but... You ain't sleeping with the governor's daughter, man. You ain't dancing, doing the tango in public. Woo, just making the whole room raise in temperature. And then the sword fighting. I mean, who? Do, where do you get gnarly sword fighting? Only in a Zorro movie, man. And he makes it look good. He makes it look stylistic, man. You make... You want to be Zoro because he's just so cool. And yet, he fights for the people. Something that is kind of seen as a weak thing to do nowadays. You know, we're all about like winners and ballers and entrepreneurs. And, you know, that from the bottom, that underdog hero, it's not as popular as it is anymore. I don't know what happened to that. Where are the underdog heroes of today? Where is the new Zorro of today? I hear they're going to make some, like, Zorro 2049, like, future, like, I don't know. I kind of like the beauty of the colonial Mexico look. You know, the thing about it, I said it's like a, a Robin Hood story. It could take place in any time, but there's just something about you know, this is during the gold rush, and they literally kill the rich asshole by dumping bars of gold on him. I mean, if that isn't a badass metaphor, I don't know what is. <laughs> that, that's closed casket. You know, you get hit with 50 tons of metal bars dropping on you. You're going to have bones contorted you know, innards just sprayed out all over the place. Now, obviously, they don't show this in the movie, but, I mean, wow, what a way to go out. And what a way to go out, man. I'm going I'm to take it out from here. Uh, go watch this, you know, Hero of the People. You will be surprised by the charm. They were able to make this thing for under $100 million and make a quarter of a billion back. I mean... Where are the under a hundred million dollar blockbuster smashes today? You, you hardly see them. All these movies that I'm bringing up, it's like you wouldn't get this nowadays. So it teaches you a lesson in both kicking butt and not asking for a, a, a two hundred million dollar budget. You know, you can you can get locations, you can get costumes, you can get stunt actors. You don't need CGI. You can make it happen. So go make it happen. Be creative. 
all you creative imagination connoisseurs. And that's all what Zorro is about, man. Going to the people, giving back. So give back by leaving a like, leaving a comment. Did you grow up watching Zorro? Are you excited for the next one? Let us know. Are there other movies that you think have that Ross Gotche attitude that you would like to talk about? Let us know. Also, check out my YouTube channel, Ross Media. Oh boy, oh boy. I've been Diesel Time. <laughs>